Wiseman.com. He's headed for space. Astronaut Reed Wiseman uh, packing his bags for a mission to the uh, International Space Station. Uh, but before he does that, uh, he has to make sure he's ready to go. Uh, uh, astronaut Reed Wiseman with us today, uh, Expedition 39 and 40. Uh, how are things? What, uh, uh, what uh, is on your plate right now as you get ready to fly? Uh, what's on my plate right now is just a few interviews this morning, uh, and then the biggest part of my week, uh, my family will arrive. I think they're about 30 or 45 minutes out. And uh, so this weekend and Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday is, uh, is rest time. I'll get to be with my wife and my kids. And then next Thursday, my crew will head off to Baikonur to begin the final phase of our preparations for two weeks of quarantine and then launch. So the bulk of the heavy lifting is, is behind us, and that feels great. And uh, it's really, really exciting to have my family come over here. I can't wait to see them. Great. You were selected to fly as an astronaut in 2009 and, uh, and then work, worked as, as Capcom as well. Uh, but here you are, uh, you know, getting ready to fly in space for months at a time. And I'm just wondering, you know, what, uh, uh, you know, what, what is the excitement level for you? How has just that road uh, gone, uh, you know, from being a commander in the Navy to a, a spaceman coming up? Uh, you know, what, what has, how has that been? I mean, it, was it surprising at all? Uh, it was actually, it was, there, there was always surprises. Uh, on any given day, uh, you could be unbelievably excited, you could be unbelievably tired, you could be really, really bored, but when you go through this whole two and a half, three year process of the real spaceflight training, and any week you look back on, you probably were in a spacesuit doing spacewalk training, working with a robotic arm, learning systems on the space station, and perhaps you were in Russia or Europe or Japan, and I have friends now all over the world that I didn't have before, and it's really just, it's such a great feeling to be at the end of this journey uh, and look back at how fantastic this road has been to get here. Uh, it's been exciting every step of the way for me. You mentioned your family's coming in uh, to town. I'm, I'm, I'm imagining they're, they're excited to see you fly in space for the, uh, the first time as well. Uh, what, do you, what are your daughters and, and, and your wife saying, you know, when, they, when, you, when folks ask them, is your husband's flying into space, your dad's going to fly into space? Yeah, it's a, it's a really weird thing to live in Houston amongst this group of astronauts, really. I mean, most of our friends are astronauts, and, and so for the kids, I think they just think this is a normal dad thing to go do or mom thing to go do. And so they, they think it's cool, but they don't have that imagination, I think, like I had when I was 10 years old of people flying into space. That's such a dream that's so far out. Uh, it's not even worth trying. I mean, you, you got to try. Uh, but for my wife, uh, I was in the Navy. I went away for six months at a time, and she's kind of used to that sort of come and going type of behavior. And I think, of course, she's pretty nervous right now. She told me that yesterday. Um, we'll see when the rocket goes. I think she'll have a huge relief, a uh, huge relief of some tension. Now, is there one thing that you have your heart set on doing when you have some free time on your mission? Uh, I know everyone likes to look out the windows, they tell us, uh, uh, but, you, you know, has, has there one, like, project or, or activity you've really just been thinking about in the background that this is what I'm going to do when I get up there? Uh, well, I think that one funny thing that I did on Facebook and Twitter was I asked for friends just to give me a bucket list. What are the things that you would do in space if you had one chance? Because that's really what I have right here. And I got a list of about 20 things. Uh, most of them were actually pretty funny. Uh, some, someone wanted me to play a uh, Quidditch match. Uh, there are some, some other people who want you to just take a picture of your face every day so you can see what happens with fluid shift as your, as your face gets full of all your fluid. So really to me, I think uh, I already... Uh, made a matrix of this bucket list and I want to just start checking it off one one step at a time and some of it will be looking out the window and some of it will be doing some kind of interesting things and I'm sure there will be some things added to the bucket list as time goes on. And do you hope to continue just that, that, that outreach through social media when you're in space, Twitter photos, that kind of a thing? 100%, 100%. This is my first space flight so my goal when I get up there first I gotta learn how to live and work in space and then after that, I have to be a really good worker bee for NASA, for our European and uh, international partners, because that's my job from 9 to 5, is getting the work done, getting the science done. And then free time that comes beyond that, I definitely want to try to share this experience using, primarily just using Twitter. You know, uh, you 
you are launching on a, a Russian Soyuz uh, spacecraft and obviously a, a different space program than, uh, than NASA. And I've seen photos of different types of traditions uh, that the Russians do have. And I'm wondering what you have found uh, to be either the most interesting or, or the most uh, 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 moving tradition that the, the, the program has uh, as uh, station uh, crews get ready to fly. I definitely think the most moving for me when, uh, as a backup crew, I was with Rick Mastracchio, Koichi Wakata, and Mikhail Turin before they launched in November. And the, the, the part of this, the traditional ceremony there is the planting of the tree in Baikonur at the Cosmodrome there. Every person, the first time they fly on a Russian vehicle, uh, plants a tree. And now there's this beautiful promenade of these really old trees as you walk down to overlook uh, the river there in Baikonur. And I think planting a tree and just knowing that thing is growing there, hopefully forever, uh, is, is really kind of a special, special tradition. And certainly the whole time we were in Baikonur, we would just stroll up and down that promenade and look at all the names, starting with Yuri Gagarin and then going all the way up to our three great friends who are getting ready to climb on the rocket. As there's something very special about that. Great. Well, Reed, thank you so much. I'm, I'm out of time, but I could talk to you all day. Uh, all the best <laughs> as you finish your, your training and, and get ready to fly at the end of the month, and, uh, and uh, safe landings. All right. Thank you very much. Great talking to you as always. Space.com.